Those who can, do. Those who can't, talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people, okay? <laughs> What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Mother's Day, and thank you all of you mothers out there. None of us would be here without a mother. So make sure you guys all remember that. Call mom, send her some flowers, take her out something, take her out to eat, bring her something beautiful, give her a hug and a kiss, and say thank you to all of the mothers out there. You know, um, today I'm actually headed back up to uh, get ready for this trip to Vermont, where we're going to be working on trying to give back to some people that we've never met in Vermont. I'm looking forward to it. I may have the chance to meet angry cowboy fan. I'm trying to do my best impersonation of him as well, as well as my buddy Mike J, who has been a tailgate member for years. Shout out to all of you guys. And an update, um, although he's got a long, long ways to go, Randy Seitz is doing better. He's definitely headed in the right direction. Keep the prayers up. And today, you know, when I get back to the man cave today, we'll be doing our usual live stream that we always do on Sunday afternoons uh, in the off season where we originally started it three years ago. For those out there that think that the Cowboys haven't done anything and they're a disappointment, understand we started this group three years ago because we looked at it and was like, man, we got Amari Cooper gone. We got, you know, Lyle Collins is getting cut. We got, uh, you know, our PR guy is getting sued and fired and things. And Jerry Jones has got a paternity test. And we had all kinds of stuff. And so we got together and channel members were able to come through. They were able to speak their mind. Happy Mother's Day, baby. Um, speak their mind and things, and we were able to kind of look out for each other. And that's continued uh, during the season. We do it on Saturdays, although now we're going to have games on Saturdays and stuff. And I don't know if you heard this one. <laughs> Talk about changing the game in the middle of the game, but I guess when you're the NFL, you got the house rules. There will be three games on Christmas Day, which will be on a Wednesday. And I guess all of us NFL fans will be net net flicking and chilling because they're going to be on Netflix. So that's another streaming app that you're going to have to get. <laughs> so now it's Paramount, it's YouTube, it's Amazon Prime, and now it's going to be Netflix. You do realize that eventually everything on the NFL will be streaming. And that's just another money grab by the NFL, which in some cases uh, will actually make the money go up even higher. But Today, what we're going to do is, um, I got to get back to my roots, okay? I have the most incredible wife and mother. Um, she's not my mother, but she's a mother. Um, and Tracy. And I dream of things. Uh, I dream things up, and, and I say, honey, can you do this for me? And she'll look at me kind of side-eyed and like, no, I can't. I can't. That, that's No, it's too hard. And lo and behold... She magically makes it appear. I don't know if she's got elves that are working for her, that are doing the work, and they're just like hidden in the closet or something. But I said, I said, honey, Cooper BB looks like the juggernaut. When you see his shoulder pads are up here like this, I said to myself when I first saw pictures of him, I said, he looks like juggernaut. And so I said, honey, I need a shirt with Cooper BB as juggernaut. And she's like, okay. And she's like, Juggernaut. I said, yeah. I said, like, Juggernaut, who was in um, 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 Deadpool too. okay? I said, he's wearing a yellow suit, but I need it to be blue. So, lo and behold, we're going to be giving this one away today. Look at this. Look at this. Now, now, what's funny is, I didn't know she was working on this the other night. And she sent it to me because she thought it was actually uh, Guyton was the juggernaut. I was like, no, 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 no. Because it came through. It was a black guy. I was like, honey, I said, it looks great. I said, but he's a white guy. 
She's like, why didn't you tell me? I said, I didn't know you were working on it. You told me you couldn't do it. And so she ended up changing the color. Okay, I was like, okay, look. I was like, okay, that's cool. And um, when she sent it back to me, I said, it's perfect because he's got his hand on the ground there, you know, because he's actually ready to punch. I said, what would make it perfect, what would make it perfect is if he had a football in his hand. And so then it came back and there was a football in the other hand. I was like, yeah, but he's the center. He's not a running back. I said, it needs to be on the ground. And so she's like, I can't, you know, she put the football on those. Beside, it just didn't look right. But she cut it so it looks like the football's tiny. And that he's squeezing the crap out. You see that? Look at that. Look at that. Juggernaut. Oh, man. I love it. So hopefully, um, well, not hopefully, we'll be giving that away today at our live stream at 5 o'clock. And we've got the rookies here that are working out. And, you know, there's always, at this time of year, very rarely do they say, man, why did we draft that guy? That guy looked like some shit. No, they're going to say, hey, they all look good, man. We, we're we patting ourselves on the back. We feel good about our players and everything else. And so far, what we've seen out there, um, I talked last night about Cooper BB um, doing one of the drills where he's on, like, it looks like sandbags or something. It's a balancing drill to be able to move and hit while you're on these bags to keep your balance. And he's just, like, locked in. It's like his feet were in cement the way it looked. It didn't look like he was actually balancing on there. You know, if I'm balancing on that sucker, I'm, you know what I'm saying. Um, so he's looking good. Guyton, he looks like a giant out there. Um, and, and we're beginning to see the potential. Now, here's the question right now is, <sighs> you've seen articles out there like the Cowboys hanging around the rim. I reminded you guys that, you know, all of the doom and gloom that happens, you know, the beginning of free agency when teams are going out there and um, spending a whole bunch of money. If you look at the graph, the Jets have spent more money in free agency over the last 10 years than anybody. Than anybody. And it hasn't gotten them anything. And I will say New England, the last couple of years, have been a big spender in free agency as well. And they can't seem to get it going. The Eagles are more the exception than the rule because of the one year they went to the Super Bowl. Now, don't get me wrong, because here's the difference. It's one thing to say, we've got a really good team. Let's make it a great team. And you add an A.J. Brown, you know, and things, right? You add a couple of players to top off the talent. The problem is for, say, the Jets or the Commanders, teams that traditionally spend so much of free agency, they've done so poorly in the draft and they're so short in so many places, they literally are building a team with free agents. And that's the problem because you can't afford to do that. And you have too many people coming from outside that all have to learn. Now, the Cowboys are still a good team. Vegas still has them as a 10-win team. Okay, forget all the talking heads out there that, and, and, and all the idiots that, like, you know, here on YouTube that say, um, you know, the Cowboys, they, they might be last in the division and things. Well, they might be. Anybody might be, but I don't really think so. They still have a lot of talent. This is the opportunity where the Cowboys could say, okay, the dust is cleared. Free agency, the big step of free agency is over. Teams have got the draft picks. And now you're beginning to see the veterans that are being released. The Cowboys, less than three weeks from now, get another $9.5 million to go with the $4 million, which basically we've been basically sitting between 4 and $8 million all off season, And we've done a couple of signings, Eric Kendricks and, of course, Zeke coming back. But Mike McCarthy has let you know we're not looking to be the Jason Garrett run Zeke Elliott 30 times, 25, 30 times a game. Zeke Elliott will be a role player. He'll get like 10, 12 carries a game. We'll be doing running back by committee, which means we're going to, with this Texas Coast offense, getting to be more like what the Green Bay Packers were 
when they won the Super Bowl with Mike McCarthy, their last Super Bowl they won, which was a lot of really good players that made you pick and choose who you were going to stop. If you're going to try and stop Greg Jennings, well, we got Donald Driver. If you try and stop Greg Jennings and Donald Driver, we got Jordy Nelson. And that's going to be how it is. And then, you know, we're going to throw some runs in at you. And so it will be trying to keep a defense guessing. And this is very quarterback friendly because if you rely on just one weapon, they're going to counteract and double team that guy and try and take him away. But if you have comparable guys across the board, then, hey, take him away. We'll take what you get, you know. We'll we'll 12 personnel and, you know, shift out of that into, you know, uh, empty backfield and basically have five wideouts. And if you've got eight men in the box, no problem. We'll sling the rock. If you don't, then we'll run with the two tight ends. And that's how you're going to be more effective. So the question here is, Knowing that the Cowboys will get $14 million, uh, will have $14 million basically in a couple of weeks, and teams will be beginning to release players. And knowing how they penny pitch, they can actually get quite a few players. The question is, is do they want to get it to $24 million and get into the top tier of teams with cap space by getting C.D. Lamb done? Because now, all of a sudden, between having the four comp picks – looking at, say, three fives and a six added to the seven that you had. I'm sorry, six. I think we traded one. The six that you have, you got 11 picks for next year. You could do some trades and bring in some guys and really, really go all in. All in, by our definition, people look in and say, you grab every big name player and bring them in. But all in may not necessarily be doing it that way. Instead of being able to bring in two or three guys, maybe you bring in five or six guys that can all help your team out. Maybe you get a guy for a role like a Calais Campbell. You offer him a contract to say, we want you to be a rotational player on our team. Who knows what the plan is, but let's listen in to what they had to say about C.D. Lamb's contract here. I mentioned the dynamic that the Cowboys are facing, whether they realize it or not, with C.D. Lamb. That price tag keeps going up and up as other receivers get paid more, and it's just a matter of time before Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase get paid more, and it's going to drive the price higher and higher. Stephen Jones was asked by Adam Schein about this dynamic with C.D. Lamb and other receiver contracts. Here's what he said. At some point, you got to fit all these guys in, and, you know, it all comes home to roost. you got to pick and choose the guys that you want to keep and who's going to be the foundation uh, for your team as you move forward. Part of the reason uh, I'm sure C.D.'s not done is because, uh, you know, he's looking around the league to see where some of the guys you just mentioned are going to end up. You know, the same holds true for a Micah and, you know, right on down the line. So it's, uh, you know, every contract affects other contracts. And, of course, you uh, certainly understand that each player wants to maximize his value. And, you know, at the same time, the clubs have to figure out uh, the best possible way to put the best players on a football team uh, to try and win a championship. So, uh, you know, obviously in Kansas City, they kept Mahomes and Kelsey, but they had to let uh, Tyree Kill go. But uh, they were still able to uh, have success without him. It's almost like they just sit back and wait for things to happen, though. See, everything that's happening in Kansas City and with other great teams is the product of a plan that they are implementing. The Cowboys just kind of go with the wind on this stuff. That's what it feels like to me. If they want to prove me wrong, they, they have every right to. But look at the Eagles, one of their arch rivals. They got a couple of receivers that needed to be paid. They paid the first one, then they paid the second one before Justin Jefferson blows the lid off the market because we know that's going to happen. That is proactive. That is what the Cowboys don't do. They make bad moves, bad decisions at the wrong time. And they can say all they want. Well, you know, C.D. Lamb doesn't want a contract because he's waiting to see what others get. You put a number on a table that he likes and he says, hmm, I can take that or continue to wait 
and wonder, and maybe I get injured working out on my own. Maybe I, you know, slip and fall on a, I don't know, a puddle somewhere. I mean, I don't know. You know, you you give him certain cash right now. Cut my elbow. He's going to be more likely to take it. Cut my arm. So they, all of these, all of these situations. It feels like they misplay it. Like every one of these, it can go this way and go that way. They always go the way that blows up in their face. Yeah, I, it's 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 a tough one, and you know that that you know I I, I yeah, I'm not going to sit there and buy what Stephen Jones just said. I mean, Kansas City did the opposite, Mr. Jones. He, they got out in front of the situation and got a bunch of picks and unloaded the contract and the money and kept the team going. They were in front of they the situation. They that. weren't like, oh, wait, Tyreek's up and we don't know what to do and now we can't trade him and he wants a boatload of money. No, no, no. They did the opposite of you, Dallas. They were they proactive and got in front of the situation. Now you have handcuffs on you and C.D. Lamb's got the lock. And Kansas City stopped that. They went, no, no, no. We got the key, and we're taking them off, and we're controlling the situation here, right? So they're they're stuck. They're in a spot here. I don't know. And the C.D. Lamb thing is very, very interesting. It really is. Fantasy people love C.D. Lamb. Well, I get it. He's the guy for that offense, and they throw they they all they got is him. So they throw him the ball every play. That's what it is. But I'm going to tell you, the league does not view C.D. Lamb in the same class as the guys that we know are the top top receivers in football. I can just tell you that. I know that from everybody. I mean, when I talk about Dallas with anybody in the league, they're like, ooh, man, that's C.D. Lamb situation. Ooh, man, ooh. I wouldn't want to have to pay him that money. I like C.D., but I wouldn't want to have to pay him, right? I mean, again, there's an, there'd be an argument for me to make and go, I'd, I'd take Devontae Smith over C.D. Lamb. I'm just going to tell you right now, I would. Devontae Smith will run by you for an 80-yard touchdown. C.D. Lamb not going to do that. He's not. Now, he gets a lot of touches and stuff like that. Like we said, he's the go-to guy. But I got to think again, this is the problem of the situation, which was also, though, I don't feel that bad for Dallas because they made this situation, whether it's not getting out in the contract or not having other receivers and letting one guy make it look like he is your offense. And now you're like, oh, crap, we don't have anybody else. So they put themselves kind of in the corner twice here in this situation. And I don't know how the hell they're going to get out of this one. Continuing. Well, okay. Here's my rebuttal to this. Technically, um, here's the thing. You do have the fifth year option on CD Lamb, in which case you still have his rights. He's under contract. He can't go. He can sit out right now until basically when training camp opens up, when it becomes mandatory, that's when it really starts costing you game checks. He will play this season. And you could trade him at any time, any time before the NFL New Year next year. So when you say, well, they got ahead of it, they took you know the bull by the horns and they shut him down, well, they traded him. They traded him. So, you know, the Cowboys could still do the same thing. Um, does it make sense to try and get the contract done? Of course it does. But here's the reality right now. Technically... If the Cowboys, and I'm not saying that this is the, the, the right course of action, the Cowboys can have Dak Prescott play out this year on the contract and basically get rid of $55 million of money and keep putting keep from putting more money down the road. And this may actually be the plan. Because if we're talking about a new contract, a new contract right now has to add $95 million in dead money. Now, I want you to understand here... <clears throat> So many people are pissed off at Dak Prescott in saying it's ridiculous how much money they're paying Dak Prescott. $55 million for the year. Understand that this is because of mismanagement where you had to restructure his contract where you took a $17 million, a $19 million, and a $26 million. You kept kicking all this money down the road. Right at the moment, the Cowboys have elected to take all of that hit right now. Might not be the worst option out there because they can absorb it. As we pointed out, they will still have $14 million. They will have the rookie class signed. $14 million right there is still enough to make some other moves to fill in the holes. C.D. Lamb, you can play him on the fifth-year option, sign him with the contract next year, I mean later in the year, or franchise tag him and get him under contract. 
and put that money even further down the road. It's not ideal, but it may be what they're looking at and saying, we could take a $17 million hit right now. We could have them um, play out this season. Then we franchise tag them. And we work on getting a long-term deal from that point. And we can kick that even further down the road to give us more options. All right, good people. I've got to pack up all my computer here and things because we're going to be on the road. And as always, I appreciate you guys. And let me let me give you this as we get out of here. Those who nope. can. Nope, that's not the right one. I can't find the diss track. I'll have to find it and get it for you guys. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you real soon. Peace out.